Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Santa's favorite stop, Rooftop Landing Reindeer Farm of Clare. Come see and pet real reindeer. Visit the gift shop, get your picture taken in Santa's sleigh. Fun for the whole family. Tis the season, open weekends now through December 21st. Rooftop Landing Reindeer Farm, Clare. On this week's Michigan Magazine, we visit a mid-Michigan eco-friendly artist, Victoria Spleet Lens, who turns discarded soda cans into wearable jewelry. But first, join us as we visit the historic Ma Dieter's Log Cabin Hotel and Lounge. Here in the small crossroads village of Luzerne, we explore not only the spirit-filled upper-level rooms, but also a wonderful cuisine. Ma Dieter's, an area tradition since 1921. Stay tuned, it's all coming up on this week's Michigan Magazine. Something special's cooking hot and delicious. Indulge yourself at Morning at Maggie's in Bay City. Omelets, frittatas, hot cakes, and more. Make every day special with a stop at Morning at Maggie's for breakfast or lunch on Saginaw in Bay City. There is so much fascinating history in the state of Michigan. We all know that. But to go deeper into the more local past, the past that more directly affects communities, is what's intriguing. The hometown heroes, characters, and true pioneers that actually formed the heritage of Michigan's regions, counties, towns, and villages is truly what's developed the character of the state. On this edition of Michigan Magazine, we explore an Oscoda County landmark that is laden with stories of amazing truth, legend, and lore. Ma Dieter's Restaurant, Bar, and Rooming House has been resting at the corner of M72 and Dieter Roads in Oscoda County since 1921. Then in 1941, the original structure was torn down and rebuilt, making it the largest log cabin building west of the Mississippi in its day. This was also the year that the business namesake and original owner, Ma Dieter, lost her husband, William. Up till then, William and Anna Ma Dieter ran the business together. Ma Dieter was known far and wide for her philanthropic ways and support of community projects. Anna Lucille Ma Hartman Dieter was born in 1879, then passed away in 1967. Her final resting place is just up the road at the Luzerne Cemetery in Big Creek Township. Her tombstone is said to be the largest in the cemetery. Through subsequent owners, Ma Dieter's proprietors have come and gone, all maintaining and perpetuating the heritage of this landmark. On occasion, members of Ma's family have been known to stop by and visit with the current owners and to see how things are going. Always stop in when they come through. Um, there's one who lives in Harrisville. Okay. We have a picture of her wedding actually on our website. She was married in front of the fireplace. Oh, wow. So we met her. Um, they stopped in. She was on her way back from a doctor's appointment, her and her daughter. and. She kind of showed us around where things used to be when she was a kid and how much it's changed over the years. And mm -hmm. I mean, most, the most thing everyone realizes is that when you walk in the door, there's no longer a staircase that goes up to the second floor. Oh my, so, so what is up in that, in that second floor? Is, is there any more boarding here or is that just... Uh, there is, there's still the 12 rooms up there, okay. but it's not currently being used. Mm -hmm. okay. It's just, there's the stairway's now in the kitchen, so it's not very easily accessible for guests. Uh -huh. We ventured upstairs and found that time seems to have stopped standing still as a monument to the past, as it was in Ma's day. We'll share more of our exploration of the upstairs and the building itself on future Michigan magazines, but today's visit was to see what is new at Ma Dieters and what keeps modern day patrons coming back. We get a lot of people downstate, they have cabins up here and mm -hmm. they, they come in over the weekends. Mm -hmm. Obviously the summertime we get a lot of vacationers here. and A lot of renovations have taken place already, haven't Yes, they have. We've done a lot cleaning the place up and uh -huh. just trying to make it look a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. and. 
Tell us a little bit of what, what you think the uniqueness of Mont Dieters is. What do you think the draw is? I think it's just the fact that the size of the building, the, you know, the, being one of the oldest log cabins, um, it's got, it's, it has a lot of history of mm -hmm. back in the sawmill days. You know, it used to be, it used to be a little bit of a rough, rough place back right. in the day. Besides uh, the everyday bar fare that you might see at other bars, you know, hot dog hamburgers, you've got a full line here. Tell us a little bit about what you guys got. Look into the back. We do a full service restaurant menu. We are no, most known for our pizza and our fish. Mm -hmm. We do on Tuesdays and Fridays all you can eat Alaskan Pollock mm -hmm. with fries and coleslaw. Okay. Um, we serve our cod three different ways. We have deep fried, lemon pepper baked, Cajun cream, those all come with your choice of potato, vegetable, salad, or coleslaw. Mm -hmm. um, we do burgers, your normal Dieter burger, which is a third pound patty with the grilled mushrooms, bacon, okay. Swiss cheese, and a bun served with fries. Mm -hmm. We do we wet burritos, nacho supreme. Saturdays we have prime rib, which we draw a very good crowd in for that now. Really? Okay. Um, we started at five and we cook two primes, and when they're out, they're out. Some days it's gone by six, some days it's gone by eight. You just never know. Oh so. my, my goodness. Now, what would you like people to take with them if they come to visit Mod Dieters? Uh, the history, the hospitality, or both of the above? Or? We're working really hard at getting a good home cooked, nothing pre done. We make almost everything comes from scratch now. We roast our own lunch meats. Mm -hmm. So we're I mean, we're, it's Luzerne. You're eight miles from the closest town. It has to be good food or there's no reason to drive out here. That's right. Except for Mont Dieters, of course. Right. And one of the newer features, I think, is your patio out there. I mean, you've got uh, quite, the, quite the structure out there so people can, you know, enjoy themselves out there. What else goes on out there? We rent the patio out a lot for private events. Okay. That's become quite popular over the past year. Um, a lot of charity events will do barbecues. We've done baby showers, wedding rehearsal dinners, so it's a great space for a private function because you can see about 100 people out there, so plenty of room. Many people say today they think Mott Dieter would be pleased at the way things have been going at her namesake, and still some say they are sure she is. For those who believe the spirit of Anna Lucille Ma Hartman Dieter still literally roams the upstairs rooms and hallways. Whether that's true or not, we know for a fact that the spirit of Ma Dieter is ever present in the heritage being perpetuated and preserved at the corner of Dieter Road and M72 in the crossroads community of Luzerne, Michigan. Historic Ma Dieter's Law Cabin, Restaurant, and Lounge. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Luzerne Express Campground is the premier campground with everything to make your northern adventure complete. Modern and rustic campsites, equestrian campers welcome, a huge market with bakery and deli, nearby RV, hiking and horse trails along with a complete canoe, raft and kayak rental. Visit us online then call for more information and reserve your spot today. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of Northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by, get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. Santa's reindeer from Rooftop Landing are on the road this week in the following cities and times. Meet the reindeer, then visit the Rooftop Landing Reindeer Farm in Clare for holiday fun. Open weekends through December 21st. There certainly can be found true beauty in the ordinary. Everyone knows that if you slow down and observe the ordinary, one can come to appreciate its beautiful complexity. Too many things of beauty are taken for granted because we see them only for what their purpose in life is. Not what they're made of or what their potential is, but what they can do for us at the moment. When a person does take time to notice the ordinary for its beauty and perhaps potential, then takes the object and manipulates it to accentuate its beauty so more can appreciate it are called artists. In our travels at Michigan Magazine, we revel in our meetings with these people who seem to radiate a positive energy of imagination and optimism. For instance, take this ordinary soda can. Sure, it does possess a certain beauty of its own instilled by a creative advertising agency, but look deeper into its potential. After serving its intended usefulness, what do you see? A pretty empty can. 
perhaps, but let artist Victoria Spleet Lenz of Tecumseh, Michigan, gaze at its emptiness and see where she takes it. It's amazing. A snip here, a bend here, and add a secret molding process there, and you have an original line of jewelry called Fashion Counts by Victoria. It's turning into a part-time business that seems to be catching on in popularity from the fashion conscious as well as the ecology-minded individual. Victoria works full-time as a paraprofessional in the Washtenaw Intermediate School District and volunteers at a school for developmentally disabled adults and is now finding more of her free time devoted to the world of art and now marketing of her new artistic venture, turning soda cans, juice bottles, and water bottles into an irresistible line of jewelry. Now this is something that must have been on your mind for a while before you plunged into it. Yeah. How did this come about? Well, actually I wanted to make some uh, jewelry out of stained glass. That's how I wanted oh, to get okay. started. And we were actually on our way to Jackson where there was this company that was real big into stained glass and they were closed. And on the way there, and I saw my uh, water bottle and the sun was just glistening and it was sparkling. It was so pretty and I thought it was so much lighter and yet it has color that I could possibly think of a way to incorporate that into a piece of jewelry. And how did that come about? What's the progress that you did, a uh, process that you, you followed from bottle to jewelry? Well, I didn't want to uh, say what I did with the pop bottles because that's kind of like a, a secret. Mm -hmm. right. But um, the cans and stuff, I, what I do is I have like my family in Alpena right now is cutting the tops and the bottoms off. Uh -huh. And then I cut them into strips. For the earrings, they have to be a straight cut and, and little strips, which I have some done right here, this is an earring that I'm in the middle of doing right now. Oh my goodness, so these are all aluminum, is it? Or? Yep, yep, and I put some beads to add color to it, you know, the light blue, and I love the lime green kind of color. Now, if you looked at that at a distance, or even close up, you really can't tell what type of material. You just know that yes. it's pretty, it glistens, but uh, <laughs> this is really kind of a unique situation we've got here. Uh, this is a, a really a neat recyclable way to do these things. Hmm. Yeah, I got a lot of compliments on them. People buy them off me when I'm, you know, shopping and stuff, so mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. But these cans, they have to be cut into, you know, straight strips. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's... a lot of work, but what you come up with is something that's, it really stands on its own as far as art and, and jewelry is concerned. It's kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, it is. Now, how many different types of material do you use besides is it just the cans and the Absolutely. bottles or what? Pop cans and uh, plastic pop bottles. Mm -hmm. um, this one here is a different type of uh, the blue. Um, yeah, that one there is from a moon mist bottle. Okay. And I use, the, I think it's a Nest Tea uh, drink can. So uh -huh. they're all, I found out that um, my, the bottles and cans that I use, I don't get it for the flavors because I have to get it for the color, <laughs> which my kids are not happy with. <laughs> so you go with the color, the, the most attractive oh, yeah. color. What do you look for in a bottle when you look at something like that as far as the possibility of jewelry? Um, the colors, that, and I think of some beads that would look good with it and, and certain outfits and, and stuff. So, mm -hmm. like this stuff right here, um, this is all out of the same can, but you can just add different colors of beads to accent it, like the lime colored beads accents the, you know, the touch of the lime in the can. Mm -hmm. This one here is, um, like I say, from the Diet Sprite, mm -hmm. and I just added some clear, you know, aquamarine beads and stuff. So. so you're looking at pop cans in a different way. Oh, I mean, yeah. You rarely do they get back to the, the 10 cent recyclable situation with you. I mean, you probably have uh, quite a collection in your garage or yes, somewhere around yes. this area. <laughs> yeah, in fact, a lot of my, my a lot of my cans are in Alpena right now from my family. They're cutting the tops off for me. Saves mm -hmm. me time. Mm -hmm. And my husband, he does all the cards. He makes all these. So this is pretty much a, a, a home-based operation then, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, this is a very special big started. item. Mm -hmm. Let's go over some of the items you got up here. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the, the highlights of uh, what kind of pop? Or okay, cans or this whatever? here, here is... Um, a Futopia, I think it's lemonade, mm. this one right here. These are made from uh, the um, health food drinks, are called spritzers. Okay. You know, from the health food store, I saw those and I had to have those. Actually, these are too. This is made from an Arizona iced tea. I forget the flavors, because I never get for the flavors. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, Diet Coke. This is, I actually got these back from one of my girlfriends at work because she ordered these special, and that's what I want to start getting into is, this is a Diet Coke can. Really? Yeah, isn't that beautiful? It is. I mean, she said, I want clear and I want silvers, and so I incorporated what I, you know, so glitzy, you could wear them. When you first 
You came up with kind of with a prototype or an experimental type thing, or a lot of kind of, experimenting. Yeah, tons. Uh, where did you go with it from there? I mean, you know that you had a line here. You just come up with a sample line. Did you do craft shows, art uh, yes, shows? Started, or how did you do this? Uh, yeah, I, I entered uh, the Artisan Market in uh, Ann Arbor, mm -hmm. started going there, and people were really receptive to it. They just really, they couldn't believe it. The problem I was having was that they don't look like they're made out of pop cans and pop bottles. Right. So we just done, we just redid all these uh, cards over with the pop bottles saying soda and uh -huh. cans on it so that people, I will go to that. And then at the bottom it says it's handcrafted using recycled balloon cans and juice cans. So then we thought, we'll go up here, you know, but people, they didn't go, their eyes don't go up to the top when they're, it's sitting on a table and everything, right. but uh, they just go to the pretty colors and, you know, and then I have to tell them that it's made out of, you know, pop cans and pop bottles and then they really get excited. Mm -hmm. So. Well, where do you plan on taking this from here? I mean, you've got a marketing plan, do you, or how well, are you going to be? I just started. Mm -hmm. How long so, have you been into it now? Um, about a year. I just right. started doing it, but I work full time, yeah. so that's right. uh, and a commute almost an hour. That's kind of mm -hmm. like hard. But um, my what I'd like to do is to get a, a sales representative. That's mm -hmm. what I've gotten some information. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to um, send it to. Uh, some movie stars, I got all the, or the celebrities, I've got a whole list off the internet of who are into the environment and everything. And I'm trying to get into retail stores right now. I have retail prices um, on the internet and then um, we have whole